There's an STD out there that's dangerously unknown to the global populace. It's more destructive than herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, and hepatitis combined. It has caused more deaths and destroyed more people than HIV, AIDS. This STD is so contagious, so infectious, that no condom known to man can stop its transmission. And not even sexual abstinence can prevent one from contracting it. It can hide inside the body undetected for many years and left untreated. This disease will cause death, not just to the infected individual, but to future generations. This STD is known as a demon spirit. People who have sex outside of the marriage covenant and who walk about frivolously getting involved in whatever their wherever their pleasures take them there is no protection when you operate in your own will there is no defense against this spiritually transmitted disease or this STD especially this kind of disease this unclean spirit now I wanna answer some questions concerning this STD, concerning this disease, so as to bring understanding and so as to enlighten anybody and everybody that would hear this message. First question is, how do demons enter? Well, a demon is widely believed to be a fallen angel, according to the Word of God, how in Jude it talks about the angels which kept not their first estate or basically who didn't re remain in their initial habitation and were cast out and Isaiah 14 speaks in a prophetic way about this Lucifer this 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 anointed empowered angelic being this cherub that had responsibilities high responsibilities but he failed to meet those responsibilities by rebelling against God and and he was cast out of heaven, he and those who follow him. So that's basically what the scripture reveals to us about demons, devils, unclean spirits as they're called. Now, demons enter by one means, one single means, and that is by sin, which is another STD, a spiritually transmitted disease. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, the word of God reads, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So according to Ephesians chapter 2, what this is saying is that when you obey the common trends of the world or the sinful trends of the world, when you live your life according to the direction of the ungodly, then what you're really doing is you're consistent or you're in accord with the prince or the ruler of the power of the air. Now when it talks about the power of the air, it's talking about the spiritual government, the evil spiritual government that inhabits the earth in the upper atmospheres. And then it says that that is the same spirit that is at work in inside of the children of disobedience, those who, who, who disobey God. So that is exactly how they come in. They come in by way of sin. Sin is an act of disobedience to God, but it's also an act of obedience to Satan and his demons. Jesus said in John 8:34, "Verily, verily I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin." And then down in verse 44, he told the Pharisees and the religious leaders and those who opposed him. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts or the desires of your father, you will do. So he just told these men that their father was the devil. Now, why would he say that? He said that because he likened their actions to their origin. He said, based on what you're doing. This is who your parent is. And he goes on in that verse and says, He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, meaning he speaks it from within himself. 
for he is a liar and the father of it. So all who lie, all who compete against each other, all who hate one another, all who walk in pride, all who commit sexual perversion, all who murder innocent children, all kidnap, all who do these things, all who bring destruction. These things are, are attributes of Satan and of the forces he governs, which are these STDs, these unclean spirits. People try to wear condoms thinking that having sex outside of marriage is going to benefit them in some way. So they wear a condom to protect themselves from the consequence or the result of that sexual act, whether it's a physical STD or whether it's a pregnancy that they don't want. They don't want this child and so they wear a condom not realizing that that condom does not prevent what's going to happen to you spiritually whenever you disobey God. So disobedience to God is the way demons enter into the human soul because our bodies are temples, meaning they are houses. They are places that can be inhabited by spiritual forces and spiritual beings. So we know that sin is the means, it's the entry point for every demon spirit, directly or indirectly. Now, what are the ways through which a demon can enter? It can enter through your eyes, it can enter through your ears, it can enter through your mouth. Now when I say through these doorways, what I'm expressing is very simply this, that the Word of God talks about what we should do with our eyes and what we should not do with our eyes, what we should do with our ears and what we should not do with our ears. When we sin against God by way of things we look at, when we sin against God by things we listen to, when we, th when, when we sin against God by things we say, we are opening our houses up to an unclean spirit, an STD, a spiritually transmitted disease. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 23, uh, verse 22 and 23, the, Jesus said that the light of the body is the eye. So what you see radiates inside of your body. And it says that if your eye is single, if your eye is focused, as in focused on God or focused on righteousness, your body will be filled with light. But then it says if your eye be evil, your body will be filled with darkness. And if the body is filled with darkness, that's a great darkness. And so when we understand that, we understand that whenever we set our eyes, open our ears to darkness, we are opening our eyes and opening our ears to the devil. And as far as our ears go, 1 Corinthians 15.33 says that evil communication corrupts good manners. So when I sin against God by listening to something foul, whether it be something foul on television or something foul on the radio or something foul on the iPod or foul in the world, when I intentionally give my ear to something vulgar, a vulgar comedian, or somebody who's speaking something that contradicts God, I am opening my soul up to this STD. And it's far worse than a physical STD on any and, and on every occasion. Now that's how the spirit of error comes in. Many people misunderstand the word of God. They misunderstand God because of things they've heard. They've given their ears to something profane and the spirit of error comes in. The spirit of antichrist can come in taking a person's focus away from God and bringing it onto the world. Now as far as things we say, Jesus said this in Matthew 15, 18 through 20. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Defiling is talking about an, uh, impurities. It's talking about a corrupting. Demons corrupt. Okay? Sin corrupts. So when you say something that you should not be saying, when you speak curses over your life or over somebody else, when you say something that contradicts the word of God, you are sinning and you are opening yourself up to an unclean spirit and this thing will come in and it will control your life unless it's dealt with and so then Jesus goes on to tell us that our actions are also openings to the devil he says for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts so your thoughts can open the door to Satan then he says murders which are things you do with your hands adulteries sex okay that can cause an opening to demon spirit if it's not under the covenant of the Word of God Fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies, meaning you speak things against God. These things will open you up to unclean spirits. These are the things which defile a man. Second Peter 2.19 says, While they promised them liberty, talking about liars and false prophets, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, 
Whoever overcomes a man of the same is he brought in bondage. If somebody overcomes you, he will bring you into bondage. So that's how demons gain control. They tempt you to do something, you obey them, and then they control your life. They bind you. So how can we be cured of an STD?